I don't necessarily want this to be entertaining or fun to watch. Uh, I know it's going to seem a little uh, boring and silly through parts of it, but uh, pretty much I'm I'm making this as as a bit of a trail guide. If you're wanting to hike this trail, or you've always wanted to but not been able to find enough information, and had multiple aspects of things that caused you to second guess yourself and not do it, uh, making this in hopes of uh, answering some of the questions you might have or um, giving you a little more confidence in on what you're going to encounter on this uh, trail. So hopefully this can be a help to uh, all those who are interested in hiking the Pine Mountain Trail. Just wanted to go back over a few points that of importance if you're wanting to do this hike. Uh, one is it's very difficult so if you're not sure of where you stand physically on being able to go up and down then it's probably not a good idea to even do it unless you're doing a short out and back. Uh, second is water is kind of tricky few and far between and some of the spots dry up when it's been hotter and hasn't rained a lot so I would almost plan my hike if you're going all the way through uh, according to the rain so if you know it's going to be dry you're better off just waiting until there's some rain also just wanted to uh, talk about what kind of the some of the things you'll see like uh, Black Mountain runs in your peripheral on the right side if you're coming from 119 for probably 90% of the way to the Dina Spring Shelter and pretty good over half the way from the Dina Spring Shelter towards Pound Gap. So it's pretty cool to always have that shadow lurking over and your left side you've almost got continuous views. Uh, over into the Cumberland Plateau which is nice so I would definitely try to plan the hike when there's no leaves because uh, you're gonna lose your continuous views for the most part whenever the trees have leaves on because uh, most of the views is kind of the uh, silhouette of the mountains and stuff in the background through the trees which is still pretty good, but most likely you're going to lose almost every bit of that in the summer and the late spring. Uh, also, some of the wildlife you might see here is uh, it's a lot of red tailed hawks. Uh, I heard a whole lot of rough grouse during their uh, mating call with their wings. Uh, the little drum flutter and definitely black bear that's something to keep in mind but I haven't seen as much sign as normal on this trip I'd say because it's just now getting out of hibernation mode but all in all this is a probably the best hike in the state and you don't have to worry about tourists and a lot of people there is a possible potential to run into four-wheelers but I haven't had that problem but I'm sure that certain times that you may at least come in close contact with them maybe not necessarily one-on-one uh, -on -one, but there may be trails below or something from where you're at unless somebody's on the trail illegally but I've done 10 miles out and back Birch Knob from Pound Gap and two and a half miles at Bad Branch Falls at Bad Branch Nature Preserve and I've done 17 or however many miles probably a little bit more than that on what I've done uh, here on the Holland section I haven't seen one single person this whole time 
So it's kind of hard to beat that. Another important piece of information for the trail is parking and shuttling. I, when I hiked the first knob section, I parked at the Apolistic or Apolistic, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, church. It's across from the state line gas station. Go up the hill and Luckily there was somebody outside and uh, I pulled up and talked to them, explained to them what I was doing and they were really friendly and offered me anything I wanted basically, sitting they get hikers all the time and just asked them if they had a preferred place for me to park and they pointed out a spot and uh, so I was able to park there. That would be a good thing to do whether you're hiking the birch knob section or starting the highland section from uh, pound gap so uh, that would be the preferred choice you can also park behind the gas station and that would really be about your only only legitimate options i guess it's possible you could park at the uh, parking area for the geologic sign and possibly the Civil War Memorial area, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend that unless I had more information. But the other end on 119, it has a spot up on top that's flattened out uh, just as you reach the top of High Mountain that you can pull off and park. There's plenty of area there. And you just gotta be careful crossing the road and then the trail starts. So, something else to keep in mind. I know if you don't have any information on it, it can be pretty confusing when you're trying to figure out where you're supposed to park to start the trail, where the trailheads are. But the Highland section is gonna come out right at the back of that gas station. So, if you're starting on it, then that would be the preferred place to park is behind the gas station. But for Birch Knob, if you park at the gas station, you're going to have to walk up a pretty big hill to get to the church just before you really ever get on the trail. Plus, if you're not driving up to the towers, that's another half mile to a mile that you're going to be walking before you technically get to where the trail starts. So, just thought I'd pass that along. Hopefully, it'll be help to especially some outsiders who might not be familiar with this area.